everyone, I'm Dr. Deepthi Karya and today we'll discuss about neural pathway for pain inhibition. Now, first of all, pain transmission as well as pain perception. Whatever pain is transmitted to the central nervous system and whatever pain is perceived by the individual that is subjected to inhibition or you can say subjected to modification within the central nervous system. Okay, so inhibition or modification of pain takes place in central nervous system okay now so you can say the degree of reaction to painful stimulus suppose we have painful stimulus and how much we react that is different in different individual and uh, that varies from one individual to another individual and there are two components of pain separation system they are one that is spinal pain separation system which is present in the spinal cord and second one that is supraspinal pain separation system we will discuss one by one okay now so first of all, that is segmental inhibition or spinal pain separation system. So for example, suppose this is the spinal cord. So through spinal cord, various nerve fibers we have discussed, ascending tracks, they ascend up. Okay. So from which group A fibers, they are for touch or proprioceptors. Okay. So group A fibers or you can say dorsal column fibers here, when they are stimulated, okay, they activate some segmental collaterals and this segmental collaterals they cause presynaptic inhibition of the pain fibers pain fibers are a delta and c fibers so when this a fibers a alpha beta they are stimulated they cause presynaptic inhibition of this a delta and c fibers okay now so for that one hypothesis was given it was given by medzak zack and wall and it was given in 19 65 and this is gate this was named as gate control theory or gate control hypothesis so it suggests that pain inhibitory complex that is present in the spinal cord mainly in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord okay so now uh, in this theory there are three components three systems are there in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord so number one here this one they are central transmission cell which we named as t cells okay we will discuss one by one. Second is substantia gelatinosa SG cell. They are present in the dorsal horn. Okay, Rex lamina number two. We discussed. And third one, they are afferent fibers. Okay. Either they are large fiber A alpha, A beta, or small fibers, they are A delta and C fibers. Now, what are the functions of each and every? We will discuss. Starting with first one, they are central transmission cell. So here, central transmission cells here. They are present in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. And this central transmission cells, they activate lateral spinothalamic tract. It is the ascending tract for the pain sensation. Lateral spinothalamic tract that is stimulated. Okay. And that is for the perception of pain and uh, motor response of the pain. Okay. Now, second one, they are substantia gelatinosa. This substantia gelatinosa is present in the dorsal horn and this substantia gelatinosa you can say they inhibit or you can say they regulate the activity of central transmission cells. Okay. And another important thing this activity of substantia gelatinosa is regulated by large and small fibers. So this is the basic mechanism. Trans central transmission cells they cause transmission. Central transmission cell, act cell activity is regulated by substantia gelatinosa. And substantial gelatinosa activity is regulated by large fibers and small fibers. Okay. Now, so three things we have discussed now one by one. Uh -huh. Suppose if large fibers are stimulated, we are stimulating large fiber, this one. So when large fibers are stimulated, there is rapid discharge on the T cells. Okay? T cells firing is fast because large fibers, their conduction velocity is fast. So rapid discharge. To the central transmission cell okay and this large fibers also stimulate substantia gelatinosa okay? and when substantia gelatinosa are stimulated the stimulation of t fibers this stimulation this will be cut off rapid cut off that results in cut off of the stimulation of this central transmission cell so you can say that substantial gelatinosa which regulates central transmission cell now they are also stimulated so central transmission cell activity is regulated or you can say there is negative feedback it is inhibited but when small fibers are stimulated small are a delta and c fibers what they do is they pass impulses slowly so slowly they stimulate central transmission cell but they inhibit substantial gelatinosa 
so inhibition and inhibition that results in positive action so when small fibers are stimulated this transmission increases transmission of what pain sensation and when large fibers are stimulated because here although this large fibers they produce rapid discharge on the central transmission cell but they also stimulate substantia gelatinosa and they produce negative feedback effect okay so this is the uh, gate control theory it suggests that dorsal horn our dorsal horn of the spinal cord acts as a gate and when large fibers are stimulated the gate closes because here plus minus minus but when small fibers are stimulated minus minus plus the gate gets opened up a clinical application of this uh, spinal or segmental inhibition is one is stress analgesia. If suppose any uh, soldier that is uh, wounded in the battle and the soldier is in stress, so, so at that time the soldier is not feeling any kind of pain, that is stress analgesia because of sympathetic overactivity. Pain is decreased if we are touching or shaking that injury area. Suppose you, you have some injury, what you do is you just shake it. Why? Why pain is inhibited? Because large fibers are stimulated A, alpha, beta and that inhibits the pain sensation. Acupuncture, here needles are inserted and when needles are inserted to specific part of the body that also produces analgesia mechanism we will discuss uh, detail later on. Uh, there is opioid system which acts. Counter irritants when, when we are applying the same thing here A, alpha, A, beta fibers are stimulated and that inhibits segmental inhibition of the pain that relieves pain. Then Another is TENS therapy, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. It is given in chronic pain. Transcutaneously, some electrodes are placed and they are placed on the surface of the skin. And non-pain, pain, low threshold afferent fibers, like fibers of the touch are stimulated by this electrical stimulation. And when they are stimulated, they result in the inhibition, inhibition of the pain fibers. So this is the clinical application about, we discussed about segmental inhibition of the pain. Now suprasegmental inhibition. Suprasegmental means this is spinal cord. Above the spinal cord there is one system and this system inhibits pain. So analgesia that is produced by this descending inhibitory fibers. And this inhibitory fibers they are on this dorsal horn, Rex lamina 1, 4 and 5. And they inhibit this uh, pain transmission. Now which are the structures in the supraspinal inhibition? You can see here this diagram this I have taken from the Guyton textbook I have drawn it. This is one of the very good diagram for supraspinal inhibition to understand. So you can see structures immediately surrounding third ventricle this one. Periaqueductal gray matter here aqueduct of sylvias periphery to that this one huh? in the gray matter uh, in the midbrain okay as well as substantia nigra in the basal ganglia. And fourth one, that is Rafe Magnus, one of the important things, Rafe Magnus nucleus present in the lower bones. So these are the areas, four areas you have to remember, structure immediately surrounding third ventricle, we are going above downward. Then periaqueductal gray matter, then substantia nigra in the basal ganglia and in the lower bones, that is Rafe Magnus nucleus. So here, one of the important one, as I told you, Rafe Magnus nucleus, which is located in lower bones here. <clears throat> this neurons of the Rafe Magnus, I, I just uh, show here. Neurons of the Rafe Magnus, they receive neurons from the periaqueductal gray area. You can see this is one neuron which ends on the Rafe Magnus nucleus. This one, you can see here. This is the diagram. As I told you, this diagram is very important. So they receive innovation from periaqueductal gray matter reticular formation. As well as they also receive fibers from the thalam sorry, hypothalamus. Also from the frontal cortex. Okay. And these neurons they have they contain serotonergic neurons here this one as well as uh, substance p secreting neuron okay so serotonergic neurons now from this you can see these are serotonergic neurons they descend down and they reach to the spinal cord okay and they end on the dorsal horn of the spinal cord how they act we will discuss in detail uh -huh. now here this neurons they secrete encephalin you can see here Encephalin. Encephalin, how does it act? Encephalin secreting neurons, they cause presynaptic and postsynaptic inhibition of your A delta and C fibers. These are the fibers for pain. So, A delta and C fibers are inhibited. Okay, so encephalin secreting neurons play an important role there uh, from the Rafe Magnus nucleus. Another uh, amitriptyline uh, applied aspect that is, amitriptyline alleviates pain by increasing level of the serotonin. 
and the function of substance p in this neuron and the the, the relation uh, with the serotonin uh, that is not very known okay but the thing is this encephaline neurons important thing is they cause pre as well as post synaptic inhibition of a delta and c fibers okay another is as i told you peri aqueductal this is rafe magnus we have discussed peri aqueductal gray area this is located in the midbrain and uh, this sends information in neurons to the rafe magnus nucleus and uh, they cause inhibition of the pain neurons of the peri aqueductal gray matter they are opioid receptors they have opioid receptors okay on their uh, surface and they are different types mu kappa delta okay uh, and uh, this opioid receptors they are present on this peri aqueductal neurons okay they are present on the uh, surface of the terminals of primary afferent fibers carrying pain sensation and the terminal of the substantia uh, gelatinosa of the dorsal horn you can see this opioid receptors they are also present here also okay and this opioid receptors are stimulated by endorphins and encephalin so this is one of the we have discussed endorphin neuron and encephalin how they work now we will discuss this this endorphin and encephalin these are the opioids how they work now we will discuss that one so you can see here this is your dorsal root ganglion this one okay and this is your first order neuron which will cross and it reaches to here this is the pain pathway fine now from supraspinal there is pain inhibitory system okay it has this neuron encephalin and endorphin secreting neuron encephalin endorphin now you can see here so this is this is the magnified form of this one this is your dorsal root ganglion this is your uh, substantia gelatinosa of rolando their second order neuron and they are crossing here and this is the neuron which is coming from the supraspinal pathway okay so now this neuron has opioid this one this dorsal root ganglion has opioid receptors this are and opioids they are released by this your supraspinal system okay so these are the opioids released okay and oh, which are the opioids encephalin and endorphin okay and when they they release what they do is this endorphin suppose when it binds endorphin and encephalin okay so how endorphin and encephalin works endorphin when it binds it causes opening of the potassium channel here and when potassium channels open what happens there is hyperpolarization okay and hyperpolarization decreases release of neurotransmitter that is substance p and this is you can say presynaptic inhibition okay this transmission is inhibited encephalin how it works it causes closure of calcium channels here so calcium is not available no rupture of uh, your uh, So secretory vesicle no release of neurotransmitter and that causes uh, decrease that that again causes presynaptic inhibition fine huh. so this inhibition this is the same thing I I have uh, shown the same thing stimulation of descending you can see here this is again the same diagram this is your pain pathway this one okay this is sorry this one and this is your pain inhibitory pathway fine. so when stimulation of descending pain inhibitor pathway when this is stimulated what happens there is release of endorphin now endorphin what they do endorphin is opioid is opioid peptide that binds with the opioid receptors and it increases potassium permeability so when potassium permeability increases there is hyperpolarization and decrease neurotransmitter release and opposite second thing if when encephalin is released encephalin causes, causes closure of calcium channel again there is presynaptic inhibition fine right? now there are three sites where opioid could act one that at the site of injury suppose here there is injury there also it is released second at the dorsal horn and third in the brain stem in brain stem also we have discussed at rafe magnus nucleus okay and nalo uh, naloxone that is specific anag uh, antagonist of this opioid right now morphine morphine relieves pain by two mechanisms morphine uh, that binds with the opioid receptors okay and it decreases the release of substance p substance p release is decreased at the spinal level as well as here in the spinal cord also morphine here it acts and it decreases the release of opioid okay and second is at the supraspinal level there is supraspinal inhibition binding with the opioid receptors in periaqueductal gray area and it activates uh, descending 
inhibitory pathway that produces inhibition of primary afferent transmission in the dorsal horn and morphine analgesia is uh, blocked by the drug that is known as naloxone okay naloxone right that is morphine antagonist uh, other is acupuncture as i told you in acupuncture what we do is we are just inserting needles and acupuncture also reduces pain by release of opioid peptides opioid peptides are released placebo or you can say touching shaking the area also releases opioid peptides and it causes inhibition of pain ha huh. hypothalamus and frontal cortex also play an important role in uh, pain inhibition because neurons descending from hypothalamus and frontal cortex they act on the brain stem area brain stem has pain inhibitory system that is periaqueductal gray area and rafe magnus nucleus and uh, this descending serotonergic pain inhibit and pain inhibitory system is stimulated in condition uh, like stimulation of limbic system that is the seat of emotions fibers from the limbic system they supply periaqueductal gray area and they modify pain transmission like as we have discussed soldier wound during the battle they don't they don't feel pain that is because of this mechanism now another applied here is hyperalgesia hyperalgesia means non noxious stimulus produces pain noxious stimulus produces more pain for example suppose if you have if you have injury here what happens anybody touches here you feel pain touch is not a stimulus to produce pain okay yeah, so non noxious stimulus produces pain and suppose if anybody tries to uh remove uh, the debris or anything huh? then that is noxious or anybody tries to inject something there then that is noxious noxious stimulus produces more pain so that is known as hyperalgesia no non noxious stimulus produces pain noxious produces more pain and what are the causes of hyperalgesia either it is because of damage to the tissue or nerve lesion so tissue damage there are two varieties of hyperalgesia primary and secondary primary hyperalgesia that is found in the tissue damage and uh, here what is the cause pain threshold is decreased pain pain threshold is reduced okay and uh, when pain threshold is reduced small amount of uh, you can say touch that also produces pain okay and secondary hyperalgesia here there is uh, excitatory state excitatory state excitatory impulses they pass from the central nervous system to the injured area okay and uh, because of this excitatory state a uh, slight amount of touching also produces pain then hyperalgesia due to nerve lesion whenever there is lesion in the sensory nerve fiber then also that produces pain uh, tactile stimulus also produces pain so this is about the applied aspect okay and all my notes are available in pdf form link for the same that is given in the description box so if you wish to get all the notes they are available on my application named vesalius thank you so much